Hey guys, welcome back to Glenn's Garage. Today's video, we're going to be working on the ML behind me here. It's an 08 320 CDI, so W164 platform, and we're going to be changing the fuel filter out. Okay, first thing we got to do is engine cover. Purely cosmetic, we're just going to pop that off. Should snap on here and back here, so it should be a little simple lift. There, there, there. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to want to do we're going to want to get this plenum out of the way. So this is your air intake. Pulls air. The engine pulls air from both sides here. Through the air boxes and filters. Into the plenum. And then down in here into the turbo. So we're going to want to get that out. Out of the way. And then we can move on from there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do to get this out... Your MAF sensors, one here, one here. So you're going to squeeze, squeeze the end of them here. And it should, there we go. So get both of those out first. We've got a positive crank, the old PCV valve, positive crank ventilation valve back here that has to come out. That goes into here as well. And Three clamps. One, two, three. Once they're done, it should lift out of the way. Okay, just started a wiggling here and there we are. Now that airlock's out of the turbo. PCV clear. And there we go. Once you've got the cover off and the intake plenum, air intake plenum off, this is what you're going to see. So, this is the fuel filter we're going to be replacing here with the water sensor in it and the primer pump on it. Turbo, of course, uh, PCV valve. Um, steering fluid oil filter uh, these are your fuel rails fuel injectors are down here and on this side fuel rails fuel injectors down here the electronic controls for the fuel injectors of course your MAF sensors there uh, this will be thermostat and then a bunch of other stuff on the front and I'm not really sure what it does except I'm sure cam sensors and controlling things like that as well. Um, oh, and this is your turbo actuator. So this controls variable boost on the veins on the, the turbo. All right, so anyway, that's just what you're looking at. I'm going to get it going and start getting this fuel pump replaced now. So we're going to start, well, I'm going to start unplugging the water sensor here. So it's just a simple little squeeze the end here and this will pop off of this so that's out of the way um you can see here the bracket that holds this in place back here is this clamp here the you need a five mil hex head so we're going to try and undo that um that should open up enough for this to to slip out without undoing the brackets so if it's stuck or it's i'm having too much trouble wiggling it i'll just undo these three bolts are lifted out. Now, two fuel lines here. Uh, I've got these clamps on it. Now, a lot of people will say they are um, single-use clamps. They're not. You can put a little screwdriver in here, a little flat 
slot a screwdriver and pop and they'll pop out and then you can crimp them back together you just close them up with a set of channel locks or uh, pliers of some sort so I'll pop one here well I'm gonna pop them both but I'll show you the one here and then we'll get these fuel lines off okay so a little slot of screwdriver here just drop that in there in there popped open the clamps loose we'll do that to both of these we'll just slide these hoses off and this should come out all right so undoing this bracket and wiggling around doesn't seem to have released it well off the canister here so we've got three d10 external torx bolts here that hold the clamp bracket and the fuel filter together so i'm just going to undo those we'll lift the whole thing out and we'll release it on the bench much easier that way third one is right down here all right so all the bolts are undone it should just lift out now and there we go there's a fuel filter out all right so first job but the new fuel filter came in. I got, I ordered one at Hengst brand. It's made in Germany. It's not Chinese or anything. Um, and I got the air filters as well. And it should come with two O-rings that you're gonna put on the water sensor that goes in here. So first thing, take it over, make sure you ordered the right one. It does look like yours at the orientation of where this bracket is and uh, the two outlets look the same and these do so good it's worth proceeding okay so it's the old filter this is the bracket i took off so what would have been the smart thing to do that i didn't do was check the orientation and mark something so i could put it on here in about the right place on the the new one but i can uh, i have a fairly good idea how this was sitting and the bracket was about there so We'll put it on that way. It'll be a little loose until we wiggle the whole thing around. So next thing to do, we're going to take the water separator off here. And you need a Torx, T20 Torx. Help you out with your face isn't going the right way. There you go. Let's get that in there for now. I just got it in a container in case there is any fuel spilled. This is a diesel seems to take forever my experience on diesels on boats you get the smell and it's hard to get it out so all right so this should rotate now and there we go so it rotates so the tabs are out and then it should lift up okay so i got that wiggled out um so there's two o-rings here one here and one here and you should have two new ones in your filter. So it's gonna pop those off, put the new ones on there, and then this is ready to go get reinstalled into the new filter. Well, pop the new ones on and what we'll do is we put them on we'll get a little of this diesel fuel that's sitting here and we'll wipe it around them so they're lubricated it'll help them installing less chance of them rolling off all right so a little diesel on that now so we'll thankfully that was in that tub because it's Diesel everywhere. So, got the new one here. Let's pop the cover out. This cap. Be careful you don't 
damage those prongs going in. All right, so it's in place now. Sorry, it took a little bit more pushing than I had first anticipated, but it's in place there now. So drop it in and then you rotate it around to these two screws, line up, and then we can fish these screws out of here. Here's one. There's two all covered in fuel. Probably should just get the screwdriver, it'd be easier. And I have to clean everything afterwards because it's all got a nice little film of smelly old diesel oil on it now. So just be aware if you're going to do this job. All right, so now let's move this bracket up onto here. There's plenty of room for that to wiggle around. It should be oriented around that sort of direction. All right, we should be ready to put this back into the car now. All right, so I've slipped the fuel filter back down into place. Just started the, the three bolts here, two third ones here. The brackets, I've got it basically oriented based on where the, the fuel lines are sitting. So it's going to be around about there. But I'll get it bolted up first, I'll slip the fuel lines on, that'll align it properly, and then we'll do this bolt, plug this in, and the installation should be done then. All right, so brackets bolted down now. Um, this can still rotate in here. In fact, I would say perhaps if I'd have loosened that and done a bit more wiggling, I could have slid it out and left the retaining bracket in place, but it's only three bolts, so it's not a biggie. Um, all right, so we're going to slip the fuel lines on now and then get these fuel clamps clamped back up. I'll get the cover off. Use the tip thief cover. There we go. So you leave the bracket loose there, you can make sure it's oriented properly. All right, you just slip in the, this other protective cover off here, off the fuel line, there we go. few lines and plug it all line up there okay so they're both in next thing to do we're just going to get these clamps in the right place and close them up all right so pair of channel locks just come down here there we are squeeze clamp back in place they're not one time use. We'll do the other one and we are, we'll plug in and we're just ready to start priming it. All right, so fuel pump's all ready to prime. I have, if I can tell, I probably have two choices here to do this. Uh, the simple one, which is what I'm going to try first, is we'll just put the ignition on. We won't crank, we'll put the ignition on and the fuel pump will go on and it should pump fuel through here and in any air and that should come back through the return line back to the tank. That's the theory. So we're going to try that first. We'll do it about three times on, let it pump up and off and see if that works. If that doesn't work, this is a bleed system for the tank. You put a hose, a little hose over here to a canister. It's supposed to undo this and then when you turn the fuel pump on, so the ignition on, it should, as it pumps, it'll pump any air and fuel out here. So 
that's my second option but hopefully the simple way is going to work first so we'll try that all right so did the ignition switch on three times um first two times you could clearly hear air bubbling back through the system and back to the tank it's very clear to hear the third time it just seemed like a solid pressurized and good no gurgling bubbling sounds so i think i got it i'm gonna take it for a test drive and hopefully all's good all right so driven it about 100 kilometers now had absolutely no issues no leaks no hesitations so i believe the job has been successful pleased with that hope the video was helpful for you um and if you enjoyed it a like a subscribe would be much appreciated check out the other videos on the channel and come back to the garage there'll be more i'll do some more jobs on the m class here behind me so everybody in the meantime drive safe and have a great day